Test, test, test. One, two, three. Right. <clears throat> this isn't necessarily a problem. Modern filing and indexing systems are a real wonder, and all it would need is a half-decent archivist to keep it in order. Gertrude Robinson was apparently not that archivist. I've managed to secure the services of two researchers to assist me. Well, technically three, but I don't count Martin as he's unlikely to contribute anything but delays. Sasha did find one other thing, specifically in the case of Ashley Dobson. It was a copy of the last photograph taken by her phone and sent to her sister Siobhan. The caption was, Check out this drunk creeper, LOL. I'd be tempted to dismiss this as hallucination resulting from long-term head trauma complications, but Tim came through with this one and managed to get hold of Ms. Patel's medical records. God knows how he got them, but he better not be using institute funds to woo filing clerks again. I had Martin conduct a follow-up interview with Mr. Woodward last week, but it was unenlightening. Apparently there have been no further bags at number 93, and in the intervening years he has largely discounted many of the stranger aspects of his experience. I wasn't expecting much, as time generally makes people inclined to forget what they would rather not believe. But at least it got Martin out of the Institute for an afternoon, which is always a welcome relief. Ah, head trauma and latent schizophrenia, the ghost's best friends. Aside from excessive indulgence in psychoactive drugs, it seems to me that there is simply no better way to make contact with the spirit world. I have no idea if Gertrude got the chance to read this statement before she passed away, but if anyone comes in ranting about dreaming my death, then I very much want to hear about it. The palach might also be a mishearing of the Polish word vipalach, according to Martin which means to cauterize or brand. Admittedly, if Martin speaks Polish in the same way he speaks Latin, then he might be talking nonsense again. So for now, if you'd be so kind... You're serious? You actually want me to tell my story into that rattling piece of junk? I see why no one takes you guys seriously. Some time with a more qualified care professional might right. also... I don't know what I expected, really. We'll let you know if we find anything. Oh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe I've wasted my time. I sent Martin to look into this Angela character. Not that I want him to get chopped up, of course, but someone had to. Apparently he spent three days looking into every woman named Angela in Bexley over the age of 50. He could not find anyone that matches the admittedly vague description given here though he informs me that he had some very pleasant chats about jigsaws. Useless ass. I sent Tim to check the details. Martin declined to help with this investigation, as he's a bit claustrophobic. I think the most important lines in this statement come at the very end. Antipsychotic medication and disbelief are, I think, exactly what Mr. Vittery needed to get through his problem with, uh... <laughs> Ghost spiders. It was... Oh. Um, hello, Elias? Do you have a moment? Uh, not really. I'm sort of in the middle of something. I understand. It's just that Miss Hearn has lodged a complaint. A complaint? I could just as easily complain about her wasting my time. That's not how it works, Jonathan. I wouldn't have even needed to do the recording if Rosie had kept her equipment in better condition. Regardless, I would prefer that you not antagonise anyone connected to the Lucas family. They are patrons of the Institute, after all. Fine, fine, I'll be more lovely. Now, could I get back to work? Very well. Before I address the central point of this statement, namely the question of whether the sky can eat people... Martin, are you sure about this? I just want to make a statement about what happened to me. I mean, it, it's what we do. No, what we do is research statements. Usually those made by liars and the mentally unwell. Well, I need to tell someone what happened, and you can vouch for the soundness of my mind, can't you? That is beside the point. If I ever see another can of peaches... Ugh. 
I went back over to the Calliope. There I was... thought it was pronounced Calliope. Sasha, you're back early. I thought you were trying to get hold of those police reports for the Harold Silvana case. Tried and succeeded. They were actually quite helpful. Oh. Well, good work. So, do we know if it's pronounced Calliope or Calliope? I have also heard it said as Calliope. Seriously? By who? Americans. Ah. It was a quiet day, aside from when Martin thought he saw one of those silver worms and we spent half an hour checking for it. Yes, I remember. Come on, it's not his fault he's being stalked by some weird living hive. I know. But it would have to have been Martin, wouldn't it? I mean, anything goes wrong around here, it always seems to happen to him. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Please state your name and the subject of your experience. Into that? You're joking. I can assure you this will record just fine. I knew you guys were a bit slapdash, but this is absurd. No doubt you're used to a higher caliber of equipment when pretending to see ghosts in old churchyards and mental institutions. People like a show. People like our show. And even if we do ham it up a bit, even if we do add a bit of sparkle, we're still more respected and evidence-based paranormal investigators than you and your lot. <laughs> we are not paranormal investigators. We are researchers. Scholars. Whatever. The fact is, we may play it up a bit for the camera, but that's because you can only look at temperature spikes and EMF readings for so long. We still only look into genuine, documented supernatural phenomena. You take any ridiculous story from any drugged up, dreaming, traumatised idiot off the street. Vampires, monsters under the bed, mind control, really? Who cares about evidence? Who cares about scientific instruments when you can just tell a story to the Magnus Institute? And yet, you've come to make a statement. Well, yeah, but... Let me guess. None of your respectable paranormal investigators would believe you. Well. Let me be quite clear. Chances are very strong that I won't believe you either. Interesting. You say you recorded video of the event. Yeah, I've given your guys a copy, but watching it back, the recording is so distorted that you can't really make anything out. Hmm. And you're sure you weren't dreaming? Are you serious? I just had to check every possibility. Obviously, working in your field, you must have quite a powerful imagination. Great! Great! I should have known this was a complete waste of my time. Probably. Hmm. More meat. Interesting. Tim, I'd love to discuss this further, but as you can see, I have a recording. Oh, to... come on. Look, it's not a big deal. We just need to do a few of them again. Out of the question. It's just confusing, if not. Uh, like the garbage man's team. Mr. Woodward. Yeah, so you said that Alan Parfit was reported missing uh, in August 2009, which had actually be uh, six months after the statement had been given. Obviously, it should have been 2008. I misspoke an eight as a nine. What does it matter? Well, someone noticed. Who? Uh, Josh Cole. Uh, great guy. He's one of the students using our resources for, for a dissertation. Um, oh, and here, in Miss Montauk's statement uh, about her father's killings, you refer to case um, uh, 922-0611 as case um, uh, 1106922. <laughs> oh, and uh, don't get me started on the other case numbers around the hilltop hauntings. They're a mess. Alleged hauntings. And who... Honestly cares if I misspoke case 9220611 as 1106922. Another student? Uh, well, actually, yes. Um, Samantha Emery. She's lovely. Uh, she's actually doing a PhD in manifestation. I don't care. I mean, uh, Martin keeps showing me his tongue, <laughs> asking if it looks infested. I found something on the desk. It was an apple. Next to it was a handwritten note that said, Thank you for teaching us the insides. I burned the note, just in case. And the apple? Did you eat it? Do I look like an idiot? Of course not. I cut it in half first to check if it was off. And? 
human teeth. Inside were human teeth arranged in a smile. Here, I brought you the two halves to see for yourselves. Oh, good lord, that's... Deeply unpleasant, yes. You can keep it if you want. As a proof, we do not want it. It seems we've reached something of a dead end. No pun intended. And record. Ah! Oh, God damn it! Martin! Martin, where did you put the rest of the extinguishers? Martin! It has been something of a. Ugh. Ugh. I see you. Ha! Ah. Oh! Whoa! Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, a spider. A spider? Uh, yeah, I tried to kill it, the shelf collapsed. Oh, I swear, cheap yeah, spells are I... just... Do you... Did you get it? I hope so. I think so. Nasty looking thing. <laughs> well, I won't tell Martin. Oh, God. I don't think I could stand another lecture on their importance to the ecosystem. Statement of Joe Spooky regarding sinister happenings my fault we're going to be eaten by worms. Martin, you're not... Uh, you didn't die here, did you? What? What? No, what? No, I just... No, the, just the way you phrased that. Did you I, think I was a ghost? No, it's... No, no, that's just... The, whatever web these statements have caught you in, well, I'm there too. We all are, I think. A ghost? Really? Shut up, Martin. I thought that wall was meant to be solid. So did I. We don't have any sort of weapon, do we? I mean, I, I, mean, I suppose we could Don't use... say the corkscrew. Okay. How many of them are outside the door? I don't know. I can't see because the window is covered in worms. Right, right. Damn. Well, Martin, I guess this is... Oh, hi, guys. Tim. Tim? Tim? What the hell? I thought... How did you... You made it! Funny story, really. I ran into the office. Worms everywhere, horrible death and everything. Tripped and fell into some boxes. And there were like 20 cans of gas in there. Are you, are you alright? You, you seem a bit... Fine, fine gas, bit lightheaded. Not yeah. a lot of ventilation in the tunnels. Come on. In, into the tunnels? Yeah. Actually, not that many worms in there anymore. I think they've mostly gone into the archive. Although the ones down here are faster for some reason. And quieter. You're not bitten, are you? No, I don't think so. Have a look. Uh, oh, yes, uh, alright, Tim. You look fine. Put them back on, please. Why do you have a second tape recorder, Martin? Oh, um... Well, I've been using it to record myself. I write poetry, and I think the tapes have a sort of... lo-fi charm. I see. But... Tim has managed to find what looks to be an actual trapdoor, so we won't need to bludgeon our way through any more drywall. I'm recording this in case... In case the trapdoor opens back into the archives and Prentice is there to kill us. In as many words, yes. Tim. All right. Ah, oh, come on. 